In the previous video, we uh, we played through the game Tal Fuster, Porter Interzonal 1958, and uh, well, we just concentrated on the uh, on the beautiful side of it, on the uh, attacking side. Um, what I wanted to have a look at actually were a couple of, of the crucial moments in which um, Fuster might have defended better, and uh, I thought they were quite interesting because uh, it also says something about you know the way that you can defend such positions. What we're looking at here is position after. Um, the 14th move, um, and in particular after Tal's excellent sequence uh, g4, bishop h7, bishop g3, takes takes, which uh, set black some quite unusual problems. Um, as we said, um, f takes g3 opens the f-file, and um, what this means is that white has a plan in the next two moves of playing knight e5, and then rook hf1, attacking the pawn on f7. So it's always interesting when you're dealing with these plans, which are a couple of moves away. Um, as a defender, you've always got a couple of possibilities. You could just try and uh, protect everything that's going to be attacked uh, in order to be ready for it. What you can also do, you can also try and force white um, to attack before he's ready. Um, so, in other words, to say, OK, I understand that in two moves time, then it's going to be really, really dangerous. But I'm going to try and force you to attack in one move time. And maybe the attack won't work then because you're not quite ready for it. And that was why I thought of the following move as a possible defence, which is to play b7 to b5. So what are we doing? We're trying to knock the bishop on c4 away from its post. Um, now, if white decides... Um, that he wants to keep his attacking um, structure and play bishop to b3, then black plays a5. And this is a very interesting moment because um, black is threatening to trap the white bishop on b3 with uh, a5 to a4. Um, and, well, it's actually a little bit tricky for white now. If white plays a move like a3, trying to... Um, uh, keep his bishop still on the uh, on the a2 g8 diagonal then black plays a4 bishop a2 b4 and already you can see that um, uh, black's going to get quite a bit of counterplay against white's king um, if you imagine the further moves a takes b4 a3 threatening a takes b2 opening up the uh, the a file uh, b3 well then you sort of see how the whole position has changed. I mean, White's no longer got much of an attack along the a2 g8 diagonal because his uh, his poor bishop on a2 is, um, is is trapped. So, in that way, you know, Black is trying to force White um, to attack before he's ready. Now, what White could uh, actually try and do is he could try and play knight e5 in this position. He's saying, okay, you're trying to uh, to make me weaken my uh, my own king's position, not having any of it. I'm just going to play knight e5. Um, and now the position gets very sharp, but the position is actually quite good for black. Uh, black can play bishop g5 check, king b1, and then a4, trapping the bishop. White tries knight takes f7. And then I've got this nice move, a takes b3. Um, and this is very, very painful for uh, for white. Um, after knight takes d8, then black plays bishop takes c2 check, and after king a1, then rook takes a2 is checkmate. Very nice idea, this b5 and then a5. Just again, trying to force white to uh, attack before he's completely ready. Here white played knight e5, um, didn't have rook hf1 yet, which meant that Black's counterplay um, had a chance of succeeding and that White's counterplay with, uh, with knight e5 wasn't quick enough yet to really cause Black a lot of pain. Um, the one drawback to b5, just have a little think about that. Um, the one drawback to it is that obviously Black is weakening his queen side. Um, after playing b5, Black would not really want to castle queen side there anymore which then makes a move for white, like bishop d3, quite interesting. Um, after bishop takes d3, rook takes d3, well, white has lost some um, um, some attacking power along the a2g8 diagonal. But on the other hand, 
Lucky's probably not going to castle Queenside anymore. He's probably going to castle Kingside. And of course, as soon as Black castles Kingside, then White starts launching his attack with h4. And it's not really clear um, how Black is going to create some counter chances against the White King. Uh, because by playing bishop d3 instead of bishop b3, White's avoided the need to weaken his, uh, his queen side. I mean, a move like, you know, queen d5, king b1, not clear at all. I mean, I, I spent a long time sort of, you know, wondering about this position. How good is it for White? How bad is it for Black? My engines are very optimistic for White. They think that g5 coming in is going to be very dangerous. And I think on balance, I probably do agree with them. So maybe b5 is not, um, is not a, a, a great move in this particular situation. But the idea, you know, that you might that when you see white counterplay coming away that's a few moves away you try and force white to do his counterplay immediately before he's really ready before he's got all the uh, the pieces in place um, that's a very useful defensive uh, structure to remember um, what I now want to look at is um, a little bit more of the game continuation um, and that's queen c7 knight e5 bishop d6 and then h4 um, now in this position, um, if black wanted to castle queenside, he can't do it um, immediately uh, because of this move, knight f7, queen f7, bishop b6. Uh, black actually had a couple of possibilities. Um, rook to f8 is uh, one idea, uh, defending the pawn on f7. Um, and funnily enough, the idea might well be even to follow up with bishop g8. I'd be sorry about that, but bishop g8 and then castles queenside. The bishop on g8 looks very funny, but it does shore up those squares on f7 and e6, make sure that a, a sacrifice against f7 is never going to happen. Um, another idea, simply, uh, for black, would be to play bishop takes e5, de, rook d8, rook d8, queen d8, Rook d1 and queen a5. Um, quite a long sequence. We're just going to see that again. So after h4, black takes the knight on e5. Um, he can't castle queen side because there's a rook on d1. But black uses the opportunity to exchange off a pair of rooks, reduce white's attacking force. White grabs the d file and black comes out to a5. Yeah, what have we actually achieved here? It's, um, uh, I have to say that um, I hadn't really rated this plan very highly. Um, I'd thought about it, but I thought, well, you know, White's got control of the D file. Um, isn't this just going to be very nice for White? Um, but my engines were actually quite enthusiastic about it for Black um, in terms of, you know, equalising. So, you know, you have to take it seriously. I mean, uh, engines, one thing they, they do do very well is defend. So I started trying to think about, you know, why would this be a, um, a decent way to defend? I think the first thing that you've got to realise is that um, by taking this knight on e5, um, you've actually nullified um, uh, two of white's pe attacking pieces, the bishop on c4 and the queen on e2. Um, there's a pawn on e5 now blocking the e-file. So e6 is actually not a weak point at all anymore. And the bishop on c4 and queen on e2 are not performing in the active attacking role anymore. Um, that makes the black king safer. Um, it also makes castling kingside uh, you know, feel a lot safer as well. Um, you know, white's still got this g4 to g5 push, but it's a little bit less scary um, when, uh, when it's not backed up by, um, by pressure against e6 and also f7. There's another thing that, um, that's a bit annoying. I mean, white really would like to you know, double up on the d file and really exert his control there. But um, Black's pressure against the e5 pawn is actually quite annoying. I mean, here we see maybe one of the drawbacks to this manoeuvre of tiles on the 14th move, 14th move this f takes g3. Um, what you're actually seeing here is that, you know, if you hadn't got doubled uh, g pawns, if you still had a pawn on the f file, you could play a pawn to f4 supporting e5, take control of the d file and, uh, and you're really happy. But here, you know, this weakness, which, you know, White did to, to uh, actually to induce bishop takes e5, but that, that also has a drawback. The other thing that's um, um, a little bit uh, tricky for, uh, for White is 
the, well, his bishop on c4, we said it's not um, performing any attacking role on c4, and actually it's just a little bit misplaced. And black can, you know, use that to play b5 at some stage. Uh, and the bishop might have to go back to b3 because a2 is hanging. Um, and that will give black the opportunity to maybe play c5 and c4. Um, and, yeah, I mean, yeah, then white's got to, got to start deciding, you know, how am I going to, 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 uh, to really... What am I going to do with my uh, with my light squared bishop? And all those things add up to the point that White finds it very hard to really establish control over the D file, and that means that Black's chance to castle kingside, play rook D8, and neutralize White's pieces some more is quite high. Um, one of the typical lines was looking at with uh, with the engine was Queen E3, eyeing the A7 square, castles. Um, and then a3 uh, to make sure that after um, b5 you can just retreat the bishop back to um, to e2 um, but here black plays b4 and he's getting ready at some stage to open up the um, the queen side with b takes a3 um, and for example I mean, if you played a move like rook d6 I could play b takes a3 and queen takes a3 allows queen takes e5 so um, white has got to play b takes a3, but then you know that's going to give uh, that's going to give black an awful lot of counterplay. I mean, for example, a move like rook b8 is possible, and if rook takes c6, then we play queen e1 check, which is extremely embarrassing. Um, if you know if white played uh, um, king b1 uh, here just to uh, you know avoid this weakness, then black could consider playing rook d8 when white's desired move rook d6 could be met by takes takes and queen b4 um, attacking the pawn on d6 and the bishop on c4 and if you play d7 then queen d6 threatening mate on d1 and also threatening the pawn on d7 so um you know White's not going to be able to queen that pawn. He's going to lose that pawn. He might get the pawn on a7 back with his queen, but um, you know it's not going to be any sort of big advantage. So, just all those factors together, the um, uh, the uh, weakness of the pawn on e5 and the exposure of the bishop on c4, which no longer has any active um, attack against the pawn on e6 after this move d takes c5. And also the weakness of the queen side, which gives black some counterplay. Um, that I think that that seems to give black just enough uh, tactical opportunities to castle, play rook d8, neutralize uh, uh, white's other rook. Um, after which he's, you know, black's probably going to be fine. He's not going to have any uh, any huge problems. So it seems that um, that this move, bishop takes e5, was um, um, was black's best opportunity and and should have led to. Uh, to approximate equality, but it is very difficult to spot this with black. It's uh, it really hangs together on uh, one positional factor, which is the weakness of the pawn on e5, and also um, some tactical factors uh, based on the weakness of uh, of white's uh, queen side and the the exposure of the bishop on c4. Um, I do have to say that you know when I saw these variations, um, I did actually wonder was this move of tiles h4 the best. I mean, my personal theory is that Tal played h4, which is a slightly unusual move, uh, because he was expecting black to play the move bishop f6. Uh, had h4 planned against that. Um, and when black played bishop d6, which is a little bit less natural, um, because, um, um, you know, bishop f6 blocks the f-file, whereas bishop d6 doesn't. Um, I think Tal probably said, oh, well, I'll go h4 anyway. What I wondered about, um, and I'm not sure about it at all, whether it's a good move, because it also does weaken the uh, the, um, the white queen side a little bit, was whether I could play this move a3. Um, and there's a couple of little subtle points to that. Um, if black goes rook f8, um, then actually I think that white can play g5 anyway. Uh, the idea being after hg5, I go queen h5, attacking the bishop on h7, uh, also threatening bishop takes e6, by the way. Um, and if black does something like bishop takes e5, d e, bishop g6, then queen g5, 
and well black's king is still in problems has still got problems in the center can't castle uh queen side due to the d file and the queen on g5 cutting across there um white's threatening bishop takes e6 because of the loose bishop on g6 and queen e7 queen e3 um well rook d8 is still impossible because a7 is hanging so that's one reason why a3 is interesting the other reason is that if black goes bishop e5 d e rook d8 takes takes rook d1 queen a5 then this move a3 is actually more useful than h4 in this particular circumstance what i can do is i can go queen e3 castles and then play this very subtle move bishop e2 now you'll notice i've got my bishop out of the way so b5 no longer gains a, a tempo actually that means that after b5 i could play a move like queen c5 and black's got no chance whatsoever for uh, for any counterplay um it also means um that after uh rook d8 um i should hopefully be able to play takes takes and queen takes a7 um, because if white goes black goes queen g5 I've got a number of possibilities but i could just go king d1 because after queen e5 queen a8 check will be mate in actual fact only queen b8 is uh, is possible and then queen takes b8 is mate so by and what the um um what the uh, uh the pawn a3 also does it also stops this move queen b4 from uh, from black so oh terribly sorry queen a4 is also a possibility but we're not going to have a look at that so um when white goes rook d6 if black ever gets a rook to d8 and uh, black takes on d6 e takes d6 black can't attack my pawn with queen b4 so it could well be that this subtle move a3 is um is a is a very interesting idea the only thing that i was wondering about was could black then play b5 in this position and he's going to have b4 as a sort of uh, um, way of attacking the white queen side because because um, I've weakened myself already. I'm not 100% sure, but it would have been a very interesting move. I think that uh, that a3 would have been quite uh, quite a good one there. Um, but anyway, I mean um, h4 worked out very well for Tal, you know, and uh, so you certainly can't complain about that. But uh, possibly against a, a stronger opponent, maybe a3 move of that type might have been uh, an even better attempt. So there we are. I hope that's uh, that's interesting. I hope that's given you some uh, some ideas about uh, about how to defend and what sort of factors you can consider when defending, and uh, also some ideas about how maybe you know White could have had a, a possible improvement as well.